You have reached the I'm Dealing With Podcast. I'm Sean, your host. Today, we're going to be talking about merging two mics together. And uh, believe it or not, these two mics that we're going to be merging together is the AKG D8000M uh, in this hand. And the newer, uh, this is the NW800. Again, the newer NW800. You might be asking yourself, you know, why would you do that? Well, believe it or not, these are the first mics that I actually bought when I first started the podcast, uh, the newer NW800. And I did get those off of Amazon. I'll put the links down below uh, in the show notes. Um, And they worked. I mean, they worked for what it was. But what I've learned was they really needed some EQing, some serious EQing depending upon the type of person, the voice that you have and all that. But for me, they definitely needed a lot of EQing for me. Um, the other thing was because they're condenser microphones, they pick up everything, you know, they need a phantom, um, power or what have you. So at that time I had, I was using, excuse me, my Yamaha I was an MG 10. I was using that as my mixer. And then, I ended up later on getting the Zoom H6. So with the Zoom H6, I was able to, you know, use phantom power, you know, use the built-in compressors and limiters and all that kind of stuff that's built into the H6. The problem was I couldn't EQ them. So what I ended up doing was I ran these microphones through my Yamaha and then from there out to the zoom to record. And I was able to use the limiters and compression there. But um, yeah, a lot of EQing for my voice. So um, later on, I thought to myself, and again, this is before the pandemic really hit. I thought to myself, say, you know what? Let me uh, get some more mics that I can have for portability so I can go and do my interviews and hosting and podcasting, some other favorite things. And I picked up these, uh, these are the AKG D thousand M's. So I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to do that and see how they work. And, but I've used these before, especially in houses of worship, you know, and live sound. And I love how they cut through the mix um, to me, to my ear. And, um, uh, for what I was looking for, they look cut through the mix a lot better than, um, the short SM7, excuse me, the SM58. And they're a very hot mic, meaning they didn't need a whole lot of gain. So they weren't power hungry like the SM58s and even better. The price, uh, the normal price on these are about 24 to maybe $30. That's the normal price, but you can find these on sale usually, um, around 15. So when I got mine, they had them on sale for like $19. So I bought four. So even though I was using those, um, pandemic hit in, set in, excuse me, and they're in a pouch. So I thought to myself later on, I actually like the look of these. They kind of give you a broadcast look, but they're side address, meaning you have to speak like this, not like this. This is front address or end address. And these are side address. I was like, eh, I didn't like that too much. I dealt with it, but I didn't like it too much. So, um, thinking back, I was like, well, well, how can I get, this sound in this microphone. So guess what? I blended them together. All right. Enough of me talking about that. So let's start with the source microphone that we're going to be using the AKG D 8000 M. Okay. D 8000 M very heavy mic. This is what the capsule looks like. Capsule looks like this. And if, um, 
I pull out my caliper. I'll turn this on right now. And it's already actually the zero that joker out. Okay, so if I pull out my caliper, the measurement is basically 29.1. So 29, hopefully the focus is, sometimes it doesn't, but basically 29.1. So this is what your capsule looks like. So if you have a Shure SM58, you, probably, you might not want to do it to SM58. That's a $99 microphone, it makes no sense. But hey, if you want to merge the blending of the two and you have a newer um, NW800, and you know what, it may even work with the NW700 or one of the other, one of the BM microphones. It may even work as well because they're kind of the same. This is 29, uh, the measurement. Very heavy mic. This is a real heavy, sturdy microphone. You know, tried and true through the years. So in that, you have also have to take out, there is a Phillips head uh, screw that's right there. It has to be, that has to come out this mic. So you have to pull this out. So that way when you twist the capsule of uh, the mic here, you pull that out. The XLR comes with it. All right, the XLR comes with it. It'll come up right through the mic. And you end up with a hollow mic. You know, you have a hollow tube, but it's real, you know, it's heavy. Whereas on this mic, let me show you what the inside of that mic comes with. The inside of that mic comes with, here's the capsule for it, right? That's what the capsule looks like. And also connected to that capsule is a circuit board, okay? So you can see it's not a top address, it's a side address, meaning I'll be speaking to it like this. Okay, so I, what I did was I took the circuit board out, cut the, the red and black wires, which led to the top capsule where you would speak through. And then the bottom of that is the XLR plug, the XLR plug that's at the bottom of that microphone, which is down here. So, Without further ado, let's open up this mic, this newer NW800, and let's see what it looks like. So you would hold this firmly here. You unscrew this portion. Take this puppy off. And this, yeah, it's metal. It is metal. But it's, um, see the thickness of it as compared to the, the thickness of this see yeah big difference so you take this off the sleeve and you end up with this now as you can see I've actually already done the work to this and yeah it looks a little hokey because I use electrical tape and the reason for that was my soldering iron when I went to plug it in it wasn't getting hot I'm like what the heck is going on here it decided to go ahead and give up the ghost so rather than going out and buying another one at the time, and I really wanted to just do this project to see if it works, I decided to old school and electrical tape, put it together just to test it out. And uh, <laughs> believe it or not, it worked. So let's look at what the inside of this looks like. So we're going to get our Phillips screwdriver. And we're going to take, because uh, there's two Phillips head screws right one here and one here and we're going to undo though both of those phillips head screws like so so my question to you while i'm doing this is what microphones are you using for your podcasting you know if, especially if you're using an sm7b we all know that's in a different league of its of itself you know different league on its own and nobody's just going to mess around with sm7b that's a, a almost 500 hundred dollar microphone uh, there are places where you can get it cheaper, um, but very rare. Um, you'll see it hovering somewhere between 475 and 499 for that SM7B. Real nice mic. You see it on a lot of other um, big time uh, YouTubers and those that are podcasting broadcast. It's a great mic. 
You also find the higher end road microphones. Um, you also have the RE by, you know, company Electro Voice, the RE320. Um, real look, good looking mics. You know, they look very broadcasty. And, you know, starting off, this is great, especially portability and all that. The sound, good. But I really wanted that broadcast look. So I took that, ran the XLR here, use the existing XLR and capsule out of this, and put it, excuse me, make sure that doesn't roll off, put that inside here. So there is a screw that you have to put right here to hold the XLR in. Ran the wires up through here, and wow, voila. Check that out. And there's the capsule. That's what it looks like. And this measurement, I've already measured it. If the capsule is 29, the whole opening for the capsule to go in on the screen here, the metal screen, is 30. <laughs> so the capsule fits right in there without fuss at all. And the beauty with that is you didn't, you don't have to do any modification uh, because it already has foam inside here. And, you know, I thought originally I said, man, I might have to take this foam out because, you know, it's probably not going to be right. Um, but it worked. You know, it actually, actually, ugh, it actually works. And so you do have foam inside here. You have foam around here. You have foam in here and it came like that. It's not like that. You have to do anything to it. But what I do like is if this sits in, you want to know exactly what this looks like on the inside. It sits in there like that, like so. So look at the difference. So the top of the capsule uh, sits right below the band here. So you actually have a little bit of room, you know, before you know, so it's not like it's sitting right at the tip where you got to worry about um, plosives and crazy stuff, right? So it does real good um, as far as um, some rejection and all that and plosives. But with it sitting um, off, it even gives even a more precise sound, uh, keeping the plosives at bay, you know, for the most part. Um, and the other thing is, let me put this down because I just do want to show you this. If you look at the screens, so on this mic, the screen is almost the same distance on the other. But if you look uh, precisely, once you go off axis this way, the distance between here and the top of the screen gets smaller, meaning um, let me screw this on. If you're talking, you're good here. But as you do this thing, you know, um, you get closer to the capsule, which means, you know, it picks up a little bit more. But the benefit with this mic, unlike some of the other mics and what I love about it, also being a very hot microphone. This one's a super cardioid mic, meaning is very, very hot. And I mean, it cuts through the mix like crazy. And I love that, which is why I bought them because I've used these before in houses of worship and they work great. Um, very great. I mean, and they're strong. It doesn't have like a cheesy, you know, grill, you know, you just barely grab it and it smashes. Mm -mm, nope, not this one. Uh, the other one that's also a good mic to to possibly use is uh, uh, EV's uh, the Cobalt CO7. It's another good mic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, I digress there. So as you see the capsule here, and because you have a flat surface when speaking to the front, you have more room, you know, to speak, you know. And, uh, you know, whether you're doing this or that off axis, whatever, the distance between the top of the screw, the windscreen and the capsule remains the same, which is beauty. And of course, if you add into that, 
let's say you add into that and you put a wind muff on top of that even more so talking about a nice cut it actually cuts down on a lot of stuff so i guess you're asking to yourself well it's great for you to say that you say it sounds good and it works what does it sound like you know um i'm glad you asked let's check it out the sound that you've been hearing this whole time is out of it right here so let's dive right in boom there it is front end of dress mm -hmm. front end of dress end of dress microphone right here so i have the newer nw800 right here with an akg capsule on the inside and i actually did all three of my nw800s just like this all of them and this is the sound you're getting so um, I do have my low cut filter turned off. Uh, my EQ for my Zoom Live Track L8 is flat. I have it in the middle on the highs, in the middle on the lows, and also in the middle on the mids. Nothing's being EQ'd at all. So again, here is the proximity effect. As you can hear, a few little peas and Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled pineapple pizza. Not bad, not the best, but not bad. Again, the proximity effect. So let's add the low cut filter so you can see what that sounds like. Okay, so the low cut filter has been engaged. Do you hear a difference? Do you hear a difference? And again, I'm still doing the proximity effect. Proximity effect. Here's with it off. Low cut filter, off. Proximity effect, proximity effect. Okay, so now let's add the wind muff. All right, on top of that mic. Yeah, you hear that? And again, this is the low cut filter completely off right now. So throughout this whole video, you have heard me speaking through this NW800, even though I'm using AKG components on the inside. So it's basically... Uh, AKG 800 okay <laughs> so but anyway yeah I'm just using the chassis of this you know of this unit with the guts of the AKG D 8000 M's so what does it sound like to you how does that sound so I'll do the proximity effect again 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 now I'll, I'll be doing the side address through it okay as you can see i'm talking still to the front but i'm off to the side just a little bit okay how does that sound to you so my question is not just how it sound to you but would you do something like that i mean i just wanted to do it because i just wanted a different look i wanted a broadcast look but i want the sound of what i had so this actually for me works great for some people, there was like, well, you know, this is a cheap microphone. It's garbage. Um, actually, I thought the mic was wonderful even when I first bought it, especially after you've EQ'd it to your voice. So if you have something that you can EQ uh, this NW mic to, if you have a mixer that has a built-in EQ that you can EQ this mic, you get it to sound real, real nice. But if you don't have an EQ, it's going to take some time to really find that sweet spot according to what works. But that's one of the reasons why I wanted a dynamic mic versus a condenser mic. It just has a little bit more, man, I can do a lot more proximity. It was more focused. It didn't pick up the whole room. I mean, golly, this, this probably picked up some ambient noise, even though it says it's a cardio mic very sensitive um, because it's condenser you know that's what condensers do they they're very sensitive microphones so would you do this you know and if you even if you weren't going to do this upgrade or just mash up or just hobby or whatever you want to call it what mic are you running right now are you running like an re320 are you running uh, maybe a behringer mic maybe a short sm58 maybe the sm7b Let's see exactly how it's going to work. And I did it. We accomplished it. And here it is. This mic right here. So every single mic 
that I have on this table for my podcast area is the AKG capsule guts inside the NW 800 by newer. Hope you like this video, like subscribe and share. And again, leave a comment. What do you think it sound like? Did it sound good to you? Is there something you would have done different or something you want me to change? Whatever you decide to do, just leave that there. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And as always, be blessed. Thank you.